Today started off fairly good with a nice little gap up in the chart, but that was based upon the CPI numbers that came out of Germany and their HICP numbers, which is a little bit like our sticky index. And you can just see these lower highs all day. And what we were just really looking for is see if we were gonna hold that gap fill. And then you can see right when you got to that gap fill and you broke, that was pretty much it for the day. And then we just started working our way down, unable to really find anything. That 4,100 was supposed to hold, and we traded around there, but by the end of the day, we broke 4,100, we broke 4,090, and then we traded back down to 4,080. It's important to understand today's action. I'm gonna take a moment to do that so that you could actually see today's action. I think that's helpful. Subscribe to the channel, click all notifications. We give out updates and alerts on what's going on in the stock market in a timely fashion. So I wanna point this out because this is something we really have not done since we started rallying. Since we started rallying in October, we've been working our way up and then constantly staying above those levels. Sometimes there's a retest, but when we start rejecting these levels, we wanna pay attention. So this 4080 is not ideal. You're sitting right on 4090 and you close below it. Doesn't make me feel happy, but I will say this. I like the little move that we're seeing right here and stay to the end because there's three stocks that came out with earnings that are moving after hours and I'd like to walk through them and what to look for tomorrow. So I like how we're wedged right in here and we're forming that little DTL. It's not a big one, but it's there nonetheless. And that's something that we should be paying attention to. I just don't like the closing at the low. We all know we're over. We can see the RSI getting right up to that level, right? And we know that this is kind of getting a little toppy. Now we're starting to see it roll down. And this is really the first time we've had that downward trajectory. If we zoom in on this, we can see the trend line and we can see that we're breaking that trend line and we're also making a lower low on right here. So it's not ideal what's going on here. Now, the index does not have to follow what's going on here, but this is a precursor. We actually took advantage of the dip today and I bought some names and we're gonna go through them at, towards the end here. But the point that I'm getting at is you really wanna be very cautious in here. In other words, the easy trade that you had that was going on since January, it just might need a little bit of a rest. We are still way above the 200 day moving average and the 55, so I don't see a real reason to to panic here, but what we do have is we do have a pattern and we always are looking for pattern. So whenever we have a really long bar down like this, that's making that lower low, you had this inside day and then we had to make a decision in there. When you make that lower low and you're coming across, you can see every single time you had a follow through day. So whenever you're making that lower low, there's at least one follow through day. So we just wanna watch that, right? So we can see here another lower low, follow through day. So that is possible. Doesn't mean it's always going to happen, with some of the earnings that came out tonight, I could actually benefit the market tomorrow and we could go sideways. We're gonna go through those. Now, if we just take a moment and look at percentage of stocks above the five-day moving average, we've come down pretty far and pretty fast. So just about four or five days ago, we were back up to this 84, 85 range, which is usually a short-term top. And then we kind of sell down and, and then regroup. And that's exactly what we've been doing. Now we came all the way back down and we're roughly at that 29. This is not the area where you usually see a massive correction. You might come down a little bit more, but when you get down to that seven or 10 level, that's why I'm saying there might be another day or two of this, but when you get down to that level, every single one of these arrows represents an area where the S&P bounds. If you take a look at the percentage of stocks above the five day moving average in line form and compare it with the orange, which is the S&P, these sevens are denoted by black arrows the correlation is in a green arrow. Now, if you take a look at the chart and you look at where those arrows are right now, just on the S&P, which is in orange, you can see that it usually marks bottoms. Now, that does not mean that we are there. We still have a little ways to go and we could get weaker before that happens. But that does mean that we're probably more towards the tail end of this on the short term versus the beginning of the move down. This really shouldn't be a shock to everybody. We've been trading in Tesla now since January 1st and just trading around in it after you had all these dojis. If you go back and watch those other videos that we did, and you know, it's also in the newsletter, and we've been in and out of this name in the Alpha Chasers community. To get on the wait list of the Alpha Chasers community, there is a link right up here in the top right. Simply click and you will be added to the wait list. But if you see what's just going on right here, okay, so we took a rest. 
But we've come a very long way in a very short period of time. So a pullback is not only healthy, it's almost necessary at this point. And we're looking at this gap up. And what are we suggesting that we might come down to the whopping 199? I, I really don't view that as the end of the world. And of course, you could do your short term trades, but I would be really cautious there. This market's relatively strong. The NASDAQ is obviously above that 55 and you're doing OK when I mean, you got this curling 55 up. But, you know, we're not exactly falling out of bed here. And the NASDAQ is obviously the worst of all the indexes. Now, this is obviously today. But if you take a look at them, it's not like we're going up, but it's also not like you're falling apart. A matter of fact, really, if you get super technical on it and you just kind of come to the top of this wick of that breakdown, you're just sitting there. 301.68 and you're just resting there. Doesn't mean it can't break and go to 296. Of course, things can always go lower. But what is going to really drag us down tomorrow? Is it going to be the you know, Michigan consumer sentiment that comes out at 10 o'clock or just everybody's going to want to cash out because Tuesday is CPI? Make sure you subscribe to the channel because we will be doing a live stream of CPI. We usually live trade it pre-market. And the way to get the notification is to just be uh, subscribed. So bought this all for a longer term hold as soon as we got over that 200. I'm just going to show you a really quick tip here, guys. So if you go here with your moving average line right here, and this is your 55, and just watch these numbers over here for a moment. Okay? And you're just going to watch them. You see how they're getting smaller and smaller and smaller, right? And then they turn. See how that turns? 153.88 top left to 154.06. Okay, what does that mean? That means in the past two days, we are starting to get a slope up of the 55 day moving average. You want to pay attention to that. You want to be pay attention to not only the placement of the line, but the slope of the line. It takes a very long time to turn a 55 or a 200 day moving average. And I think this is worth pointing out as well. The XLF has been hanging in there and we still held the breakout. We did not get anywhere near that, did not break that 36. And, so we still have a situation where resistance has become support and we're holding in there. Now we'll see what tomorrow brings, but we are due for some kind of pullback. Uh, I do think we might be near the tail end of it. And obviously it's going to be dependent upon how the consumer confidence numbers come out tomorrow and then CPI. But you just want to pay attention to stuff like this, where you start to see this flag on the socks and we are above some key levels here. You're above a peak level over here. And that peak level coincides right with the peak of the market. Now, if we come here and we just look at the peak of the socks itself and we drop that in, you'll see where you're at. And it's actually a little bit lower. So this is the peak of the market. This is the peak of the socks. Gets you right around the same area. I always like using anchored VWAPs on peaks and valleys. So it just tells you where everybody is. Now, you have this complete bull flag just sitting there. So for me to, to go out there and say that we need to get out or we should be we should be panicking or it's time to, you know, it's time to sell and get out of semiconductors. I have a really hard time saying that. And there's your level right there that and you're just sitting right on that level, that 421 and you're unable to break it. You had a doji. Dojis are signs of uncertainty. And when they make a decision, they make a decision for all the carnage. We still have NVIDIA hitting a new high today new high for 2023, no matter how you want to shape it, we still have a new closing high on Tesla as well. Comment on these colors. I like this color scheme. I've been playing around with different ones. I'm leaning towards this white background with the black bars for up and the red for down. I think it's the best contrast out there that, I, that I've that i had so far. And I, I don't like the gray as much. I think I like the white background more. So just comment on it. Let me know what your thoughts are. So here's that three soldier pattern we put out in that free newsletter. If you don't get the free newsletter, link in description. And then you're building a flag, but you're building a flag on resistance. And you're building a flag, you say it right in here, support becomes what? Resistance. And so you're f holding right in here plus the 55. So I'm not sure if we're going to break out or not, or you're going to roll here, but this is a pretty critical area that we're going to watch. And you can see how we held our support right in here. And this is really right around a couple days later when the S&P stopped really going up. So we do want to pay attention to that. But I do think it's important to note that neither the dollar nor did the 10 year really hit new highs today. I mean, you're right around the same exact level that you were on the U.S. Treasury note. 
Lyft is one you're definitely going to want to have on your radar tomorrow. So they came out with earnings and you could see right that level where we're sitting. So there's a little bit of support in here where we've been wrestling before. And that's right where we are right here. We're at 2, 1223 at the time of filming this. So you have the conference call that has not played out yet as I'm filming this. But just to go over the highlight to give you the bottom line. So they're coming in at 975 on the revenue estimate versus the 1.1 billion they're supposed to come in at. So you're looking at a decline next quarter in revenue of 10%. That, that's staggering for what's supposed to be a growth company. So it's very clearly not a growth company and it's very clearly having issues. Now, I'm not suggesting that you look at shorting it down here, but any kind of rally, and you probably are gonna to wanna to look at being on the short side of this tomorrow. That's how I will be looking at it. PayPal raised guidance on earnings and revenue and actually beat on both fronts. The stock actually traded as high as $83 after hours, but then the CEO announced that he's leaving and they don't have a plan. So essentially what they're doing here is they're going to start a search. Usually they have something set up before someone announces a retirement like that. You're basically sideways right here. You can see right where the post is at that 79.46. So you're up about a dollar. You're gonna to wanna to watch this one tomorrow as well. I think this is gonna be fairly aggressive and all over the place. The report was good. The news on the CEO leaving, they're probably trying to figure out exactly why and hopefully they get more clarity of that on the conference call. The most well-received report of the evening was Cloudfare, symbol net, N-E-T. You can see where we closed right down here at the 59 level. Now we're up at 65.30. We traded up as high as 68. Actually, it looks like we got to that 69 and a quarter level. We just formed that bar and then we just sold off, but you still seem to be forming a flag. Now, if we just take a look right here, we can see what's going on. The surprise that they came out and they beat a little bit. And then you can see the surprise a little bit on the revenue side as well. But it was really their net income that got the stock to move after hours, coming in considerably higher than last quarter. So from year over year quarter, you're looking at 78 million in net versus 40 million. It's almost a double in net. So that's what people want to see right now. They want to see exactly what's going on at the company. Watch the 6529 level. And they want to see that they're being fiscally responsible right now. Okay, it's really important. And I would watch this one tomorrow and just watch the 65 level, 6530 and see how it acts.